Welcome back to Hear Me Roar. I'm your host, Elizabeth Hernandez, and today we'll be talking about gender roles in sports. We'll be talking to a few students here at MSU, so stay tuned with an interview with Shantae after this commercial. Yo, why are you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in the room and boom, chicks. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think that there should be gender roles, but I think that the world that we live in, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that still see this like black and white kind of divide in gender roles. There's people that think that yes, men are the ones who should be playing sports and women shouldn't. All of that hoorah that just should exist. I played sports when I was little and I did feel that I was treated more like I was fragile and breakable compared to the boys who were on the other teams and rather than the all girls team I was on. And then also I played on a boys and girls team and that team I was treated equally rather than as fragile little girl. I'd say for the most part, yes, I care more about men's sports, but also with um, some women's sports like volleyball or cheerleading, they care more about women's sports. Um, I think a lot of people perceive some sports more uh, manly or feminine than others. In my high school, we only started really uh, integrating male cheerleader or males to the cheerleading squad and team. Uh, my senior year, we didn't really invite men into that, that athletic arena um, as early as we allowed women into it. Um, it wasn't encouraged in elementary school for men to join the team. It wasn't encouraged in middle school. Um, and as for why, I don't know. It's, it's an entirely um, acceptable field for both men and women to be in, as are most sports, um, all sports. You know, there shouldn't be a reason for a male to be excluded from a, a sport just because it, it's been uh, female dominated and there shouldn't be a reason for a female to be excluded from a, for a sport just because it's been male dominated you know society should be okay with stepping forward and breaking these boundaries um, especially if you want to progress towards this you know gender equal world that we're kind of shooting for nowadays. Men's sports tend to draw more crowds than women's sports um, but also it just depends on the level of playing like collegiate level I think UConn women's basketball team draws more um, than their men's most likely because of their championships that they have won. Um, but if you look at UK basketball, then their men draws more than their women's. Yeah, I actually played uh, some basketball in high school until my sophomore year. And we definitely struggled to find people to come to our games. Um, the men always, we always played before the men and no one ever came to our games. But like everyone would start pouring into the men's games. Joining us now is Shantae. Hi, welcome to the show. Um, so, you play basketball here at MSU, right? Mm -hmm. And how long have you been playing basketball? Um, I've played basketball for really all my life. Uh, I started playing once I was six for the Little Leagues, and I've played other sports throughout, um, like high school, middle school, but basketball seems to be my favorite, and hopefully after college I'll continue to play overseas or somewhere. Oh, that's neat. That's a long time. So within the time you have played basketball, have you experienced any type of stereotypes within, I guess, the difference from male and female players? Um, playing with males, like you're, as a female, you're always gonna get some type of stereotypical, like judgment of you because like men always feel like a female can't guard um, like a male as well as a male could. Right. Um, but I mean, as a women's basketball player, I just deal with it because I know what I can do and what I can't do. And I, I personally think that um, it'll never be equal like between men and women's basketball, and that's with any sport. But um, I think all women really just deal with the fact that um, that's the type of stereotypical things we get being an athlete. Right. And within like gender roles, like we've talked about, um, have you experienced that, not just with 
male basketball players, but with coaches as well? Um, I can't really remember a time I've actually, I've actually experienced it with the coach, but you, you see it like as like a teammate, like you see other like players, um, like being judged like by coach of what they think that the player could do or what they can't do. And as a player, like you're just sitting there thinking like, I can do that when other like coaches or assistant coaches are telling you like, I don't think you can do that. But as a player, like no one's going to be like, oh no, I can't do that. Like everyone in everyone's mind, I feel like they're always going to say, yes, I can do that. Or yes, it could be done. And with here at MSU, um, when you guys have scrimmage and play with women and male, is there some type of favoritism within just the players itself um, or within the coach? There is. Like, um, I feel like the males always get picked up first. Like, if we, like, play pickup, like, the female's always the last pick to, like, be on the court to play. And then, like, sometimes it's, like, an all-female team and, like, guys really don't want to play against us or – they think that we're not going to be serious and actually like be a competition for them. But um, there's sometimes male pick up females um, to play on their team and it's like four males and a female and right. they just play. Yeah. So do you also, like this is an, it is an issue that goes on just like many other things in the world. Mm -hmm. So within, I guess, your team like here at MSU and um, even high school is it something that's talked about has it been talked about um, it, it's been talked about not only throughout high school and in college but actually like pros like WNBA NBA like mm -hmm. there's always controversy like in the news that you see about how like women's sports are like being treated unequal to the male right. and like how women are being paid and how male are being paid. Like it's a it's a big difference. And if you actually look into it, like you'll see many type of stereotypes for females. Yeah. And you said you're it like playing basketball runs in your family. So was it something that is talked about with your family? Did they say, um, Hey, this is what you're going to face or hey, here's some things that you're gonna go through? Yes. Um my mom always told me like there's always going to be like these type of, you know, um, bumps in the road that you'll run into. But I mean, it's just something that you have to overcome if that's what you like wanting to do. Right. And what is a, a type of advice that you would give a female playing college basketball? Um, I would tell them, don't ever underestimate yourself. Um, whatever you put your mind to, I feel like you can do it. Only you can stop yourself. And whatever you want to um, like overcome and achieve, you can do it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being thank on you. the show. And uh, thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Uh, we're gonna go check out another video from M two MSU graduates. So stay tuned. It never gets old, huh? Nope. Kind of makes you wanna break in a song. Yeah. I love the sunset. I love Eagle Lake. I love the forest. I love when eagles play. I love the campus. And all its sights and sounds. Boom de yada, boom de yada. Boom de yada, boom de yada. I love philosophy. I love diversity. I love English. And all its weird words. I love the music. And all its melodies. Boom de yada, boom de yada. I love fraternities. I love sororities. I love to draw things. And all the athletes. I love Morehead. It's such a pretty place. Alice Curtis, graduate assistant, strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, I'd say there are gender roles, and I'd say that's just comes with, uh, I guess, this human perception. You know what I mean? Um, me being in the field, seeing everything, it's 
easier for me to look past that now. Uh, and, and that's the thing too I learned. Softball is actually um, the first female sport I've worked since, you know, ever. I was at University of Cincinnati, worked football. Ohio State University, worked football. West Point, football. So I came here, uh, it's a, you know, it's a mixed weight room. You know, those schools, it was just football only. Is that, and so seeing here, you know, I can see everything. And it really opened my eyes like, wow, like everybody's putting in the same work. You know, girls show up with the same intensity. Now there's, there's gonna be differences in sport, but that's just, culture of sport. Basketball players aren't going to act the same as football or baseball players. You know what I mean? But when it comes to, you know, men and women, they're putting in work. I mean, they, they both show up to compete. They both show up to get better. And I'm, I'm impressed. You know, I guess general rules, I don't think would be how I would I would say. I'd just say it's perception. People perceive cheerleading as an all-female sport. But now, like I said, being around it, I, I don't, I mean, like I said, perceiving it, that, that's someone else's opinion. I'm not going to tell someone else how to think. But me being around it, like absolutely not. A sport is a sport to me now. But no, like, like I said, being around everything now and seeing the intensity that every sport brings and the competitiveness every sport brings, male or female, no, I mean, the sport's a sport. It's black and white to me now. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's the same. Uh, Alex, I'm a graduate assistant strength and conditioning coach. Um, I work with football, men's basketball, women's golf, and the cheer team mainly. I think maybe like a entertaining factor like because you know a lot of the WNBA the players and stuff I think there's a couple of those ladies that can dunk but I think the guy like mainly people want to see that flash and like how the guys can get up and see how high they can jump and hang on the rim and try and break the backboard like Shaq used to do and stuff so I think that's one of the reasons but I I don't know um, I think it's just got to do I think society in general, just the support for women's sports isn't that great either, so. A little accessory workout is what I call them. Everybody squats, everybody deadlifts, everybody benches and presses and does all those, those main lifts. It's just kind of like the accessory accessory lifts, like different things just because of how we are, how men and women are set up differently. They need different things in terms of that. But yes, they all like a lot of times the girls come in better with a better attitude and ready to work out than the guys do. They're because guys come in a lot of times and they have egos about things. And I've run into the instance too where guys come in and they think they know everything because they see something on on the internet, on TV. They see how something works for somebody else. They're like, well, that's got to work for me. Not always the case. Girls come in and they're usually like they're new to everything. They don't know what's going on, so they don't think they know everything and it makes it easier to then they get then they do the perform the lifts right how you want it done and they listen better so it's it makes it easier on my part in that in that sense welcome back joining us now is natasha holder hi hi <laughs> um so tell our viewers a little bit about yourself um well i am a sophomore here at moorhead state and um I played soccer for 11 years of my life, and um, I'm a majoring in social work. So, okay, that's neat. So, tell us a little bit about um, the sports um, area of your life. Um, uh, how long did you play? You said 11 years. I played 11 years. I played little league, um, recreational leagues. I played middle school, high school, and currently still playing in alumni games. Okay, and. Do you, have you faced any kind of gender roles with you being a woman and going into sports? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, a lot um, with mo mainly the schools, I would say the school systems, the uh, women's teams don't get as much recognition, as much participation and audience as the men's sports do, as far as I know in soccer. Um, we never had pep rallies in school like the boys' teams did or other teams just in general. Mm -hmm. um, the participation as in boosters and audiences that would come to the girls' games compared to the boys' games was a lot different. The boys got um, way more audience members than the women did and they got a lot more um, recognition. And yeah, that is true. You see it all the time and not even just high school, you see mm -hmm. it within just college and everywhere and just professionally as well. Yes. So is that something that you, or your teams have talked about in the past or just with family? Is it something that you talk about? It's something that, yeah, the whole team in general or um, just women who aren't even in sports have realized um, watching sports. It's something that girls that I played on with especially that 
um, we would go do the same things that the boys would do, dip, like uh, all A games and state games and stuff like that, but um, we would not get the same recognition that they did, and it would just kind of, it would hurt to mm -hmm. realize that even if we did better than the boys, they would still get more recognition than we did. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so. Oh, man. And did, have you personally or just know of anyone who has actually came up and talked about it before? Um, well, mainly the only thing that that we have been told as women that's different than the men is that um, we're just not as competitive as the men and that's why we don't get as much turnout with the audiences. We're not as fast paced, we're not as tough, so we're not um, almost worth seeing as the men's teams are worth seeing right. because um, they just say that we're boring to watch. So mm -hmm. yeah, it gets, it gets pretty heated, I would say. <laughs> it's, it's hurtful. Oh my, I'm sure. <laughs> and personally, do you feel that soccer is traditionally seen more into the predominantly male? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, and you can really see this when it comes to professional, um, like the World Cup leagues, because mm -hmm. the women's World Cup team last year, the U.S. women's team, won the World Cup. And um, the men's team hasn't been able to do that in a little while, and um, they obviously don't get um, the turnout that the men still do, even though they won the World Cup. So, oh, definitely. Yeah, so you can see that really well in the professional leagues, that it mm -hmm. still maintains throughout high school, college, and professional. Oh, yeah. And personally, have you experienced that? Like, of course, you said that in high school you didn't get the same recognition mm -hmm. as the male teams, but um, just like at you, like perhaps the coach saying, oh no, I'll let so-and-so yeah. play over you. A little bit. Um, mainly, I would say with the alumni games, when we go back and play with um, people that we played with in the past, mm -hmm. I know that when they pick teams and stuff like that, w the women aren't usually picked first, and um, a lot of the times they don't want to play with the women because they're afraid that they're going to hurt us, or they're afraid we're not fast-paced enough for their game. And right. So they usually pick the men first, and then the coaches usually want the men on their team more than they want the women. They just don't feel like we're um, competitive enough to be with them. Oh, definitely. Well, thank you so much oh, for coming in today. Thank you. Um, we'll be going into another video um, on MSU, so stay tuned. Matt Rhodes, Head Strength and Conditioning Coach, Morehead State University. Uh, I'm in charge of the whole program, uh, but I primarily work with football, men's basketball, women's basketball, volleyball, and then I work with all the injured kids. You know, not necessarily Morehead State, but women play soccer, men play soccer. You know, women have softball, you know, the guys have baseball, but it's just That's it. kids playing sports, in my mind. It's just kids playing sports, getting to do getting to do it behind high school, which is pretty cool. Everyone has, they want to have success in life, they want to have success in school, they want to have success in sport. Uh, and I don't, I don't see a difference. You know, I think the, the guys and the girls, they want to be coached. They want to be corrected. They want to do things the right way. Obviously, you're going to have your little hiccups here and there <laughs> when someone just isn't in the mood to hear it that day. But generally speaking, I, I see no difference. You know, everyone has that. You know, to me, you're not a college athlete if you don't have some kind of drive. And whether you're male or female, I, I just don't see a difference. Uh, you know, more, more people support the guys. More, more people show up for those games, uh, which, honestly, it's unfortunate because it's, it's basketball, regardless of who's playing. Um, 
I think the game itself is a little bit different. Uh, I mean, there are differences in male and female. We're just we're different beings, or whatever you want to call it. Um, the game is a little bit different, but it's still it's still basketball. The kids are still out trying to win games and hopefully have fun and compete and learn life lessons beyond you know beyond sport. Um, but it is. I mean, more more people watch the guys. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Some of those guys in the NBA are just. I mean, they're they're unbelievable athletes. Certainly, uh, you know the best athletes in basketball, and uh, I think I think the same of the women. They're they're some of the best athletes in women's basketball. We're just different creatures. You know, are stronger, we're faster, we jump higher, all that stuff. It's just to me that's not a bad thing. It's just genetics. I personally, I really think the women's game is more like I kind of grew up in the '90s. And that's the kind of basketball I like. Mm -hmm. More team-oriented, less one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I see that more in the women's game than in the men's game. I can't watch the NBA. I think it's terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, I, 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 I see more of, of the basketball that I remember, like when I played in high school, mm -hmm. in the women's game. And I, I, it's, it's great. I see that more in male sports. You know, you get a football player that makes a routine plays drives me insane. They make a routine play, a cornerback or a defensive back makes a routine play and the wide receiver doesn't catch the ball and they want to be officials. It drives me insane. You, you did your job. Relax. You didn't do anything special. You make an interception, you run it back 60 yards for a touchdown. Be happy about that. But it, it, the, 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 I hate the flair. It drives me nuts. I, it just, mm -hmm. you did your job. You know, am I going to clap because you tie your shoes? Like, to me, that's what it is. You did your job. Mm -hmm. You know, you showed up. Oh, nice job. I, oh. I don't see that as much in female athletics. They just play. Obviously, in here, regardless of sport, you're all doing the same thing. You're going to squat. You're going to deadlift. You're going to you know, hang clean. So everyone's performing the same lifts in here. I find, and, and I was a college football player, so, you know, some of the most arrogant people to walk the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and I was certainly one of them. Um, the guys function with more ego. Well, this guy did this much weight, so I'm going to do that much. And I can't do that much, but I'm going to do it anyways because of my pride or whatever goes through our head. You don't see that with the women. The women, you know, here's what I want you to do. Okay. And they do it. Mm -hmm. and, and they, and, and so when I look at it, I don't really care about the weight on the bar. I want to make sure that the body is doing what it's supposed to do. You know, if you're squatting, are your knees where they're supposed to be? Is your back in the correct position? All that stuff, so you don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. I find it easier to coach the girls because they're not there. Like, well, now I'm going to put this much on the bar because she did this. Mm -hmm. No, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm just going to do it. Now we'll be going into one of our music videos produced by our field reporter, Sylvia Milantoni. It is um, Grace Rogers, and she does traditional folk art music, so stay tuned. Um, one of my favorite songs that I've written is, is this one. It's called Hanging Out. And it's one of my favorites because it was one of the first songs that I wrote um, about other people, using other people as my inspiration for the content of the song. Um, it's about uh, my sister and my host sister, one, one verse for each. And um, 
about the, the really strong friendships and connections that I have with them while at the same time I felt like it was really hard in that period of my life for me to, to know how to be friends with large groups of people. Um, so, you know, recently I've sort of tried to start coming to terms with writing songs about other people because that can feel sort of bad sometimes, making art out of someone without their permission. So I, I've sort of started thinking of it as the idea through the social looking glass theory, which is the idea that we make our self images by looking at the way that other people react to us. Um, so you could sort of expand that idea to say that all of us are sort of reflecting back and forth at one another. So when you're, when you're writing a song about another person, you're really writing a song about yourself and the pieces of, of yourself that you find in other people. So that's, I really like this song because it's the first example of, of a song where I, I wrote about other people because I saw myself in them. And, um, and the chorus of it really sort of captures the millennial condition of, of everyone just sort of sitting around and hanging out when you're, when you're a young person. Um, because that's where you really start to find who you are, um, look at other people and see what you appreciate them and, and try to mimic it. I grew up playing Appalachian traditional music in Kentucky, um, primarily at Cowan Creek Mountain Music School in Letcher County. Um, my dad taught at that camp and I started going when I was seven and I'd, I'd been playing traditional music even before then. So a lot of my musical idols growing up were people that I knew that I, I went to that camp with or I. I found at um, these Appalachian music gatherings. And to find other, other females who play music and play music well is something that's really magical because I, I feel like a lot of the time the people who are represented um, popularly as, as good musicians are accidentally, probably unintentionally men. Um, if, if you see someone playing a, a guitar solo or um, something of that sort, something that's more technical, it's, it's usually a man in, in modern media, whereas, you know, I grew up in situations where a lot of the people who were incredible, you know, fiddle players or guitar players were females, so that was something that was really powerful to surround myself with as a kid, because I, that's who I wanted to be. I aspired to be these people who I, I met in those situations. Music really helps me to understand what my emotions are about situations and to sort out what I think about people and, and the ways that I appreciate people. I usually find myself not talking to people about the things that are hard to talk about um, because I, I don't really ever think out what my issues are in certain friendships until I start writing songs and, and I sort of come to really big conclusions about the way that I feel um, while writing songs, which can be a wonderful thing to finally understand what you feel like, but it can also be strange. I don't know how to express to people in my daily life how I feel about them, and then they hear a song that's about them, and you're like, oh, I wonder who that's about. <laughs> but it is really helpful to be able to, you know, find some understanding of my emotions. And also, the, probably the most beautiful thing that humans can do is, is turning their, their pain or their, you know, basic everyday human struggles into art, which is something that I, I feel really empowered by. That's all we have for today, so thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next episode, and we'll be talking about sororities. Thank you so much again. Uh, this is Hear Me Roar, and I'm your host, Elizabeth Hernandez. See you soon. <laughs>